I understand that uh, yesterday was a late night, and today is actually beautiful weather. I guess it's always beautiful weather in uh, in Split. So, uh, thank you very much for showing up at this uh, at this hour. Um, I think uh, Split is an amazing city. Who is from Split actually here? Okay, and who's not from Split? Okay. And is that like uh, Zagreb or is it Croatia or other countries? Sweden? Amsterdam, that's the one. Uh, so, so I came from Amsterdam, which is actually like, it's a pity that it's so hard to get here because it's, it takes more time to get to Split than to San Francisco. But, you know, I'm here. And uh, um, again, uh, this is a great city. Uh, two years ago, I was here for the first time. So when uh, Ivan uh, asked me to come again, uh, I, I, I said yes. So um, uh, Ivan is uh, coming up onto stage uh, a little bit later on uh, when we found him. And he's going to ask me some questions. But first, I'll, I'll take you uh, eight or nine years back and tell a little bit about my, my story. And Hopefully that inspires you guys as well. So um, I studied uh, financial economics in, in Rotterdam, uh, which has nothing to do with the, uh, the web or internet at all. Um, my future was to be an M&A banker. That was what all my, uh, all my uh, friends ended up doing. Uh, I, didn't feel, uh, I didn't feel much for that and uh, not, not, not enough passion to do that. So I decided, you know, there was this thing called, uh, you know, the internet and I really thought that was a great thing. You know, you can, you can work but then, and then you go home, but the work actually continues, you know, it takes, it's 24 hours a day, it's worldwide, it's global, uh, uh, multicultural, multilingual, and so that was a thing that really, uh, I thought, okay, this is something I, uh, I need to dive into. So I was talking to uh, somebody who I knew that had some connections in the online scene. And, um, and this, uh, uh, this guy told me, you know, you need to talk to Boris. And Boris was a well-known uh, internet entrepreneur in, in the Netherlands. And uh, he invited me to, to his home. We had a wine and we shared some thoughts. And he told me about all these projects he was working on. And then he said, you know, if you know somebody who, uh, you know, a young guy, uh, energetic, uh, smart, that wants to take on some of these projects, you know, give, uh, give me a call and uh, send, uh, send me his or her uh, resume. So uh, I went home and I thought, hey, this is uh, cool. I know a guy. So I, next day, I wrote an email to Boris, and I said, hey Boris, I have great news for you. I found a guy uh, who, is, who fits your, uh, your profile perfectly, and um, here is his resume, and that was mine. Uh, so uh, he laughed a little bit about it, and uh, he said, when, when can you start? I was like, well, you know, I still have my thesis, but I can start uh, today if you want. So. I started working with uh, with him uh, on uh, some projects, and the first five I won't uh, I won't disturb you too much with it, but they all miserably miserably failed. <laughs> um, some uh, some great ideas, but uh, it lacked uh, execution, and uh, that's that's uh, definitely a thing that that you see nowadays again. Like ideas, in my in my opinion, are ideas are not worth much, but it's all about the you know, execution and who is doing it. Because there are, at this point, if you have an idea, there are probably a thousand people, at least in the world, also working on the same idea. So, when YouTube came out, and when that started to become a success, there were 17,000 other YouTubes in the world. How many do you still know? Right, so it's execution, but also a little bit of luck if you look into the YouTube story. Um, uh, and I wasn't very good at that at that time at the execution. So the the startups I had uh, failed, and then um, but uh, working with Boris was great. So we uh, decided to uh, to uh, start a new company. It was called Fleck, and Fleck was um, 
uh, a web overlay where you can leave notes on any site out there without the knowledge of the webmaster. So I would go to a profile on Facebook from anybody here and I could write something about that person which could not be viewed by that person or Facebook itself but only by my friends. The problem was there was no Facebook at that time. <laughs> uh, but we needed to, uh, to, to market it. We needed to launch it and we thought, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do this well. So we called some guys in the US and we said, hey, how, how do you do this, launching a company? And they said, well, you need to go to a conference. There was this Web 2.0 conference in San Francisco, which was a big conference where everybody was, uh, everybody in the scene. So, uh, so we, we looked into it and then we asked like, okay, you know, how much does it cost? Well, I need to fly there, I need to sponsor it need to have a booth, and you have your marketing material, your hotel cost, food, and I know two people, $30,000. And we didn't have $30,000, so we said, thank you very much. We hang up the phone, and then we thought, okay, what if we do have $30,000? What would we spend it on? And why not organize our own conference? How hard can it be? I was, at that point, I was like, 25 or something, I still had hair, and um, um, we, we, just, we just went in and organized a conference, so we looked up, okay, what, what, what are we going to call this, Web 2.0 is out there, so maybe Web 3.0, but yeah, then you have Web 3.0, and then afterwards it's called 4.0 or whatever they call it, so why not something more general? There's always something next, right? So the next web, the next web.org was still available. So we uh, snatched that domain. Within a day, we had a website and we had a speaker because we sent an email to a guy in, 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 in the valley and uh, we, he had a small uh, blog and we were a big fan of his blog and we're reading it every day and he you know, he, uh, he came back to us, oh, I really like that concept, uh, I'm coming over to Amsterdam. So we had a speaker, we had a conference, or at least that's what we thought. And it's very hard to organize a conference, that's what we, uh, what we uh, noticed. Uh, three, uh, we decided to organize that in 10 weeks, which was well, apparently a very short time uh, for a conference. We had no clue, I had never been to a conference or to a business event. So uh, we just did whatever we thought was, uh, was cool. Um, in the end, uh, 280 people turned up after we, uh, you know, we took out some loans with our parents and, and friends and everybody. We were almost um, broke. But um, 280 people showed up and it was a great, it was a great event. Of course, uh, because we had to organize this conference and it was uh, high stress levels, we didn't have enough time to, you know, to finish our product, Fleck. So we didn't launch it at the conference. And a guy who we sent an email to, our first speaker, um, yeah, he really liked it and he said, well, you know, I'm gonna do this myself as well in, uh, in, in the US. So he invited us to his uh, first conference in the US a year later uh, called TechCrunch 40. The guy was Mike Arrington. And we were like, wow, you know, this guy has a super influential blog, and that, uh, that was 2007, so it was still early days. But now he also has a great conference. Hmm. We have a great conference. Can we uh, do the trick, but then the other way around? So when we flew back to Amsterdam, we basically in the plane, we hired an editor-in-chief editor and we started covering the taxi. And as of that point, you know, it took a year to get to 100,000 visitors a month. And uh, as of basically uh, 2009, we bought the nextweb.com, the domain. Um, how much did you think we pay for that? Shout a number. 20,000, 20, which uh, Kunas or US? US, higher or lower? Higher for the people, uh, hands in the air? Okay, only two, no, it was lower. It was uh, $1,000, those were the times, so. 
So we bought uh, the next web.com for $1,000. And um, um, as of that point, we also hired a new editor in chief, native English speaker uh, called uh, Z at Z. We have something uh, with, within our company for uh, first name Twitter handles. So I'm at Patrick, at, at Z, we have at Boris. And a lot of people in our company have their first uh, first names as Twitter handle. It's a different story, though. Um, and um, uh, as of that point, we started to grow really fast. Uh, right now, we're in the in the in the top 20 most influential media outlets in the world uh, over all topics, and in the top five uh, on technology, which is pretty cool um, because we're basically the only ones not based uh, in the US. Um, and um, yeah, that's fun and nice. And uh, I really, really like Europe. I also love to travel to the US, uh, that's, which is where a lot of our business is. But I think w we have something great in Europe here. And um, we should nurture that and, and, and be a little bit more proud of that. Um, so, you know, the the site grew a lot, and we now have 26 people in the team. Uh, we organized three conferences, the next web in Amsterdam, in Sao Paulo, and in New York. And in April, we had our Amsterdam event with uh, 2,500 people. Uh, it was a great show. It was, well, the best event I have ever been to. And nowadays, I've been to a lot of events. Um, and um, it's weird for me to say that because I'm from Holland and Amsterdam, and we're we don't you know we don't brag about our own things. So that's um, that's probably in in all over Europe, and especially also in the Balkans. We're we're not proud enough to say that we're doing fucking great. And I think that we need to have a little bit more balls in Europe to show and to tell people that we're doing great stuff. Because there are a lot of uh, startups out there uh, in the US that get way more attention just because they have a bigger mouth. Which is not, of course, ideal. And we have to learn, and I think from a, from a European perspective, I kind of like, like people that are a little bit more and laid back and tell you the truth instead of, you know, we're doing great, we're doing X, 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 Y, and lying all the time, or at least with a bit of salt. Um, but, but, but I do think we, we, we can learn a lot from the American companies that they are just way better at telling their story and, and telling why they are great and why they are changing the world and why you have to work with them or why you have to cover them. Um, so uh, two weeks ago I was on a holiday in uh, Thailand and I read a book uh, called Amsterdam, the history of the most, uh, the most liberal city in the world. It was written by a guy uh, named Shorto. And he, uh, yeah, he, uh, he is an American, but he lives in Amsterdam for five years. And he wrote, he wrote this book. And this guy knew a lot more th about the city I live in than I did. Uh, but what was really, really cool, it was so inspiring, all the stuff that happened in the city that I love, that I work in. And I thought, okay, so... You know, this is something we have, and this is not only Amsterdam, this is all over Europe. We have culture. We have so many great things to show to the world. We need to embrace that and, and, and show it to other people and show it to the Americans, and they love cult culture, for instance, and make sure that we can build bridges between, uh, between Europe, US, Asia. Uh, but there's a lot of value uh, in uh, in our history, and uh, which can help us drive startups and the economy in in, uh, in Europe. Um, 
it's a little bit uh, about my story. I see that uh, Ivan uh, is uh, is waiting for me. Um, so, uh, Ivan, can you uh, can you come up? Good morning, everybody. A lot of people are still sleeping from the party. I would have slept as well if, what, if what Patrick happened? didn't come on time. What happened to your voice? My voice got to shit. Okay. But I think. Can you understand me? Yeah. So okay. Do you want do you want to sit a little bit more uh, to the front or otherwise sure. it's so, so far away? This is on stage improvisation. Up. Good morning, Patrick. Hey, good morning. Did you sleep well? Very, very good. Yeah. Yeah, it was late. Uh, six-hour overlay at uh, Zagreb. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, but um, no, uh, yeah, I arrived at uh, at midnight at the hotel or something. Very nice hotel. And then when I woke up, you know, it was nice weather. <laughs> nice weather. Yeah. How was the last time? Was it was nice weather? Last year was raining, so I don't remember the year before last. Really? Oh, I thought Split was always nice weather. No, last year was raining. Oh, so I was. I, I'm wondering if you live in Split and it's most of the time nice weather, can you actually? Get shit done here? No, no. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, in Amsterdam. It's raining a lot, so then you're like, oh, I'm inside, raining. I'll stay a couple more hours at the. And office. do something. <laughs> <laughs> that was like most people. No. I, I I know you're lying, but I I always, yeah I, I'm myself having a hard time when I'm in countries where the climate is so good to focus and and, and work. Yeah, but I mean, I think everyone has that when you have like nice people, especially like you just, you're a visitor here, right? So then you want to see as much as possible and like take it all in and you don't get that much sun as we do, so. Okay. But, all right, so we actually talk about something that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> sure. So anyway, uh, Patrick, I, I brought you down here for the first year when we just started this event and thank you for coming down again. Uh, as you know, events, you talked about that events are hard to put together and all that, and that organizers probably lose their hair because of it. So like, it's a trend. Yeah, yeah. And the guy from the next web, uh, the little web also doesn't have hair, right? I think Eric did. Yeah, but he shaved. Hair. He shaved, yeah. Where's Ivan Brezak? Where is he? He's in front. I was going to say, he's, gonna lose, he's about to lose his hair as well. So like, So that's something that goes with the territory, I guess. So what are you working on now? Um, so yeah, with, of course we're scaling the events. Um, we had two and a half thousand people in Amsterdam this year, going to three and a half to four next year. And um, New York is uh, big for us. And uh, yeah, I have a great events team, so they, they take care of that. But uh, where I see a big opportunity for us, for the next web, and for the industry, so what I'm working on um, is basically we see that there are so many startups right now. So when we started the next web, if there were like five startups a day that launched, that was a that was a lot. So you could check check out all the startups and uh, and, and and cover them. Right now, it's more like 500 a day. So it's really hard to to give startups enough attention that they deserve. Of course, everybody's working hard, and nowadays with the lean startup methods, it's also hard to see which startups are actually a startup or are just validating the concept. Um, but they, the same thing, they, they, they want attention, and, um, and yeah, our, uh, our ed editorial team is, of course, it's their job and they're pretty good at it to cover the ones that they think have an interesting story or an interesting uh, idea. But it's, it's getting harder and harder. And um, uh, also for, for startups that have a, a, you know, a great idea, a good team, but are not so good in their PR efforts, for instance, I think they, des they, sh they deserve more. So we're trying to build something um, that helps uh, the startups that are actually doing something of value 
to come to come up. Yeah. And which is this is very <coughs> theoretic. But um, yeah, so hopefully, um, so I'm using it myself already, and uh, what I see is I, I discover like two or three new interesting startups on a per day. Um, and uh, what the idea is, so right now, we're using it only internally, but what the idea is to open it up and to make it uh, freely available to everybody. And that would mean that you could, you know, if it, it doesn't matter anymore where where you are based, it just matters what you do, and I think that's uh, that's something that we uh, should all strive for. Strive for, yeah. Awesome. Uh, just one thing: Can you tell me about New York? I mean, you're a European guy, obviously, and you're expanding to the U.S. and you're competing with other events there. Let's say Arrington and TechCrunch. He also has his own event in New York. So what's that like, like being a European guy attacking the U.S. market? <laughs> it's uh, very tough, yeah. Um, I mean, there are a lot of events out there, of course. Uh, we have a, a brand which helps a shitload. Uh, and actually, 45% of our traffic is U.S. So although we are you know, our headquarters are based in, in, in Amsterdam. Our editorial team is based in uh, the US, uh, UK, Thailand, Australia, and some other countries. I'm, I'm missing out here. So we actually don't have any um, editors in Amsterdam. Um, so 45% of our traffic is US, which helps a lot, of course, if you want to put on an event there. And New York is for us the biggest city. But still, it you know it's just so different than what we than 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 what we're used to in Amsterdam. Um, it's I mean it's literally five times as expensive, and you, you pay for everything. So then you also start to notice like oh now I understand why you know TechCrunch charges two and a half thousand dollars for a ticket. But in Europe, nobody's going to pay that. And in the US, I don't know. People are probably paying it. But I guess they are. I mean, yeah. they're making money off it again. Yeah, so we're trying to do a, a European model in, in the US. So the, the tickets are, are, uh, are cheap, actually. Um, and um, it's working out pretty well. I mean, we had a, an, a, a yeah. You a, did it twice? or The first time last year. It was like uh, f uh, 550 people. It was nice, but it was not that big yet. But the production value was very high, so the Americans were very impressed with our European way of doing things. Because in 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 the U.S., because everything is so expensive, they rather not do anything with the venue. They just leave the venue as as is. is yeah. And and we try to rebuild the whole thing. Um. So the production value was very high, but I mean, it's it's very hard to uh, to do something in the U.S. I think it's easier for uh, software as a service companies. I think it is to do so to do programming here and just then actually go there. But is it is it also a problem like with you with not just logistics but the organizational organizational things? I'm sorry, my tongue got lost. But let's say when you want to run out a venue, is it as easy as it is here, or they're like you're from like Europe? What the hell do you want? Yeah, no, yeah, it's just, it's harder. It's just, but they have different rules. You have, you know, simple thing. If you want to hand out a beer, so in, in Amsterdam, we have a beer sponsor, Heineken. So they bring us 8,000 bottles of beer, and we can do whatever we want with it. You know, that's nice. So we hand out beers everywhere. Mm -hmm. In the U.S., well, you need to have a permit for that. A permit for that. Yeah. Uh, you need to have a certain beer education or <laughs> whatever, whatever. What is, is a beer education? Enlighten I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But it's it's just you need you need to have a permit, and um, so uh, there are, for instance, some persons. They are the only ones who can hand out beers. So if I'm as conference organizer would hand you a beer, I'm liable. 
and only these two guys are um, in, uh, insured, and there's a minimum insurance of $2 million uh, uh, if something happens. It's just, you know, the, the amount of rules there is just amazing. Like, if you want to, oh, you want to do beers? Okay, then we have to do an ID check uh, at the entrance to see if, uh, if, there's, if there's anybody anyone under, under, age? under age, yeah, under 21. So, which is something, of course, in Amsterdam, we, nobody, well, there are laws, but nobody really, you know. Works, checks that out, right? No, and I, I, I think we don't do same, that either. Same here. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. But I think what uh, what is more interesting for European companies is, of course, not to do events in the U.S., but to to think global from you know from wherever you are. If you're in Split, Zagreb, Sweden, doesn't matter. Um, the, the web is global, right? So the only barriers uh, that are there are, well, there are some tax and legal and barriers, but but is, is, is language. So, but you also do one in South America. It's so like most of the time people talk about in Europe, like Europe versus the States and all that, but you do it in Europe, you do it in the States, and you do it in South America. Mm -hmm. Like, what's that like? Uh, it was by accident. <clears throat> But it, by accident, yeah. Well, by accident, we ended up in Brazil. But Brazil happens to be a great market. And uh, if I, if I would, you know, if I would start over, um, and I would start a, a company here in Europe, I probably would focus on on uh, Latin America and uh, and Africa, for instance. Well, Latin America first, and Africa a couple of years later. Uh, uh, instead of uh, U.S., so you see that, like the, in the U.S., the competition is so high and fierce. So we can we can try to you know to conquer that market. But if you look at, for instance, uh, a German company, a, a great company called uh, Food Panda and Delivery Hero, two uh, companies that bring you food, they probably also are operating here in Croatia. No, not yet. Okay, so th their strategy is not to tackle the the the, the most uh, competitive markets. The, their strategy is, you know, go uh, go to Brazil, Argentina, Mexico, and and they open up quick and they have a lot of cash behind them. But uh, there's no big player in those countries yet. And uh, yeah, you can you can try the U.S. markets, but there you have Seamless and and other big players. And that's just going to cost you a shitload of money without gaining any any uh, market share. So you're trying to be like the biggest event in South America then? Or the most influential? I think for us it's not, it's, it's uh, we, we uh, from an editorial point of view, we try to cover the world wide web and not the American wide web. And and the same goes for for our events. We think it's important to meet people in in person. So you need to and an event is a great way to do so. Uh, and to share knowledge, we see more and more. It's not only about like inspiration. It's it's also you know um, that 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 little thing like oh if you go to the Netherlands and you want to do something in payments and you don't use ideal. Nobody knows here, of course, but that's if you don't do that, then you you're pretty sure that nobody will ever buy something from you. So local payments, like just a simple thing, is uh, is very important to know, and that that brings value. And I think in 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 Latin America, they're very hungry and eager to uh, to learn. And uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, so that's. So you happy with that event? I didn't ask you that. Hmm? Are you happy with that event? The one? In yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, we're doing now uh, in uh, December. So the World Cup is apparently big in uh, Brazil. Apparently, I, yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> um, so we first we planned in uh, in August. It was like three weeks after the World Cup, and then everybody said, "Well, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's a bold move, and I like bold moves." But uh, that was. They said, "Well, that, like you know." 
a month before the World Cup, everybody's preparing for the World Cup, and then during the World Cup, nobody's working. So then you have two months before before you do your event, and uh, that you can't really do anything. So, so you pushed it back a bit. Yeah, yeah, we pushed it back to to December. Yeah. So sometimes you have to l listen to uh, to advisors and sometimes, yeah. sometimes yeah, yeah. No, I see, it's more it's more and more uh, often that I that you see that uh, you can you can learn so much from from anybody. You know, you can talk to a stranger, you can learn something from, from that person. But if you look at the web, they're, they're, uh, it touches every business, but 95% of the businesses have no clue what they're doing online. So everybody who is in this sector is in the right place because there is just a, a lot of need for, um, for knowledge and for... for uh, experience what to do and and that can be an advisory role or freelance or work or uh, or new startups and there's just so much more to to gain um, so I heard um, you know, there's so many sectors that are still to to be disrupted which is very interesting so for instance, uh, uh, is there a lawyer here in the room? No. Okay, so we can speak freely. <laughs> well, there are cameras here. No, but I mean, everybody knows that their business model uh, is working very well for them, but uh, clients are not so happy with that. So I expect that, for instance, there's there's a lot of innovation coming from people that are sitting here in this room in in the uh, uh, lawyer sector. Um, and uh, and 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 the, the the great thing there is, it's it's actually attractive because uh, they make so much money that they also can easily spend a lot of money on simple services. So I was talking to a guy who who has a service for lawyers, and uh, they basically do. He explained it to me, and he he threw in some fancy words, but it was pretty easy what they did. So they, they take all the um, information that, they, that you put in as a lawyer, like every six minutes you say, I'm working, I worked on this project and I did this. And they're taking that data and they basically turn that into manageable um, mm -hmm. dashboards. Dashboard. And so I was like, okay, that's, uh, but then they have a certain algorithm, of course. But uh, I was like, okay, so what's your business model? And more and more I see business models are, you know, that's just the only thing that, that, that is the difference between a success and a failure. And he was like, yeah, we're, we charge per lawyer per month. And uh, I was like, well, this can't be, uh, it's no rocket science, so it should, like, is that like Google Apps prices, like $5 per month per lawyer? That's like 99 euros per lawyer. 100 euros. <laughs> so I was like, oh, wow. And, and then he explained, yeah, but th they, they save on a yearly basis. They save about 20 hours. And, and uh, an average lawyer is like 250 euros an hour. So there's a lot more to be disrupted in. Yeah. <laughs> Do the math. And although I don't think that's a... A fancy business, and I, I think you should do whatever makes you, you know, makes you going. But there, uh, there are a lot of, yeah, a lot of um, opportunities. So we'll still be doing conferences for a couple of years coming then. I think there will always be events. I yeah. mean, our, I mean, like tech events. So like, it'll still be cool since we have still things to disrupt. Yeah, yeah. I think the format will change though. You do. Yeah. Have any plans, insights? Yeah, we should talk about that. Uh, Privately, yeah, not on stage. Not on stage. Uh, All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think there's, that there's a lot to be done. Who is happy with uh, with being in the uh, in the online sector? Like really enthusiastic. Like two hands. Like two hands. Okay, there's oh, some people. Couple? Some people not, but they're like <laughs> typing oh, down. Something. Yeah. So, now I think I think. The internet is uh, is the best thing that happened to uh, to the world in in a long time, and uh, everybody who 
you know, decided not to go for the big money in, you know, or the banking or or in the or as a lawyer, but decided to to take on, you know, a challenge in in the online scene. Is uh, is cool, and um, yeah, we should we should have Keep more rolling. people. Yeah, a lot more. Do you guys have any questions for Patrick by any chance? Not even a desert question I ask. I'll I'll be uh, I'll be around today. You will. Yeah, and uh, also um, for the uh, startups. Yeah, for the startups. All right. Yeah. So then uh, you can catch up with Patrick later on. Uh, I'd like to thank Patrick for coming here a second time to split. Can you round of applause for him, please? Thank you. Thank you.